comments or corrections on that, we will consider them passed as written. Next on the agenda is the financial statement. Chair calls upon Mr. Rupp. Thank you. This is a report that contains the financial summaries of the revenue and expenditure activities of the City of Hayes for the month end of December 31, 2015. Normally we would be reviewing January, but uh, with the, the canceled meetings, we're still in, uh, still in December here. Revenues in December totaled 3,951,816. That was a decrease of 827,879 compared to the same period as last year. Notable areas of increased revenue when we compare back to December of 2014. Airport improvement revenues jumped 212,755. The largest portion of that was due to the receipt of FAA funds for terminal renovations and runway rehab. So that's basically a reimbursement. Also in that total is an additional 50,000 that was transferred from the airport fund due to budgetary cost savings. New equipment reserve revenues increased 328,000 due to the transfer from public safety. This transfer was not completed until the audit adjusting journal entries last year. However, due to the timing of the year closeout, we were able to complete this before year end here in 2015. Sewer service charges for sewer fund were up 30,700, primarily due to the new rate increase. Year to date, residential water consumption was up 4.96%. Our business consumption was down 1.38%, ending the year up a total of 1.99. When taking the new rate, water rate structures into consideration, uh, which was 3% at the beginning of the year, and the total consumption increase of 1.99, this translates into a total water and cons conservation revenue increase of 5.37 when compared to last year. Notable areas of revenue decrease. The largest contributor to the decrease in revenue mentioned above is the transfer made from the City Commission's Financial Policy Project's budget line item to the Commission Capital Reserve. This year, that transfer was 1457534 That is down $1.4 million from 2014. The budgeted transfer for 2015 was slightly lower, but also, if you recall, at the end of 14, we cleared out many items from the Capital Projects Fund that were savings from several projects across the city, including the Vine Street Project and the Fort Street Project. The Parks Improvement Fund miscellaneous revenue was off 18000 at this time last year, we, we receded 20000 in preparation for the rebuild of the golf cart shed that was destroyed by a windstorm. And then the park, uh, this year, uh, we receded 2000 as a donation for the disc golf park improvements. Expenditures in December totaled $5,124,477. That's an increase of $755,540 as compared to 2014. Uh, some notable areas of increased expenditure. Staff was able to complete three budgeted transfers, total, totaling $1,138,496 as of December 31, 2015. This shows as an increase in revenue because these transfers were not completed, as we mentioned, until the audit adjusting journal entries in 2014. City staff has improved this procedure, thereby allowing the completion of these transfers for year end. Parks Improvement Fund expenditures increased 49000 as compared to this time last year due to several projects in the works, including Larks Park, Qantas Play Park Play Unit, and the Dog Park Shelter Houses. Much of these expenditures are covered by donations to each of those projects. And special alcohol expenditures were up 73000 due to the purchase of new watch guard in-car video for the PD units. Notable areas of decrease in expenditures when comparing to December of 14. As I mentioned earlier, the budget transfer to Commission Capital Reserve was down 292000 and then fleet maintenance was down 50000 for the month, due in large part to the falling fuel prices. Year to date, total fuel expenditures ended the year 207500 below budget. Month to date general fund sales tax collections were at 622,376. That's a slight decrease of 7,302 as compared to last year. Year to date general fund collections ended the year at 7,433,104, up 40,041, or 0.55%. Again, that's comparing year to date as uh, to year to date of last year. Budgetarily, sales tax ended the year 276,949 over budget, but 89,000 below the 15 projection when we were budgeting. 
We will continue to monitor these trends in this regard so we can react proactively as we prepare for the, 17, the 2017 budget. The report of quarter to date sales tax collections by industry classification was down 19,635 or just a negative 1.05. These top 10 now represent 71% of the total quarter to date sales tax distribution. And finally, the City Clerk Finance Office invested 5.3 million in maturing and renewing certificates with a weighted average interest rate of 0.45. The portfolio certificates of deposit on December 31, 2015 totaled $54.15 million with a weighted average interest rate of 0.34. Total balance of the money market account on December 31 was $900,000 with a current yield of 0.2. That puts total investments up $1.45 million when compared to this time last year. Excuse me, clarification on that. Um uh, tax collections, was that a $7,302 increase or decrease? Slight increase, as increase compared, and that's month to date. All right. Commissioners? Just to clarify on the December, it's, we're talking, you know, most, that really doesn't reflect sales from December. That's just yep, for the most tax part. revenue that was turned in in December. So we're not really going to know about Christmas season, season tax revenue until maybe next month. Correct. In a, in a couple of weeks here, we'll get our right. distribution, and that primarily represents what happened in December. Okay. I move to approve the financial statement as presented. I second. Motion and a second to approve the financial statement. Any further discussion? If not, call for the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries 4-0. Next item on the agenda, citizen comment. Anybody in our audience tonight would like to address the City Commission on any issue, non-agenda item. Please step forward, state your name for the record. If not, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, commissioners, uh, we have, uh, I'm asking for approval of some appointments to the um, Care Council and the Municipal Golf Course. And we also have appointments for recommendation to the Sister Cities Advisory Board. I move we approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second for approval of the consent agenda. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. That motion carries 4-0. Moving on to unfinished business, we have none, so we'll move into new business. And on the uh, agenda is the wastewater treatment process design selection. Chair recognizes Mr. Christopher. <coughs> Good evening. Last week when I was here, you had seven inches of snow, and now next week you're going to have 70 degree weather. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because last week where I love haze. I love haze next week a lot. <laughs> Very good. I'm back. Um, I, I want to make a couple introductions. I'm Stan Christopher with HDR, um, uh, project manager for the owner's rep services. Two people with us today. Um, Pat Young back here. Pat um, really has been our chief uh, process engineer as we went through the development of the RFP and now as we're reviewing the CDM design. So uh, he's here with me tonight. And then Kevin Rood is the project manager for CDM Smith, the design builder. So thanks. Okay. Um, uh, we talked um, in some detail about uh, the process that we just completed. Um, as I, as I mentioned last week, the uh, notice to proceed and kickoff meeting for uh, the design build part, the part where CDM starts their work, the designing of the facility and then ultimately the construction, uh, was the first part of January. And then uh, last week we received a report, or a week and a half ago we received a report for them for the first milestone that they had to meet, which was to evaluate the critical and the most important uh, process at the treatment plant, the biological process. There were two options uh, that were considered as part of our facility planning. Um, they were both costed very closely in the facility plan and so as we went through the RFP development we uh, chose along with your staff to uh, present both of those op uh, alternatives to the design builder that was selected and asked him to actually put real uh, pricing to the process and uh, 
to the processes and uh, give us uh, a recommendation that we would consider and pass on to you uh, related to those two critical processes. The, the first process is basically um, the utilization of, of more of a traditional oxidation ditch process, uh, um, something that is very similar to the treatment plants you currently operate, only in an oxidation ditch instead of an aeration basin, um, something that uh, uh, involves not only the oxidation ditch, which I'm going to show you here, um, right here, uh, but also then after the oxidation ditch, the uh, there's two final clarifiers, uh, and then within an existing building here, uh, there's filters. And uh, uh, actually, one of those in this particular option, option uh, two, it involves uh, the use of nitrification filters, which denitrification filters, which allow us to uh, not only treat to today's standards, but in the future, as we know, nitrogen limits are going to get much more stringent. Uh, gives you the capability to be able to treat. Uh, those to those tighter limits. The other option uh, that was basically compared to that more traditional oxidation ditch is the uh, membrane bioreactor process or MBR process. Um, in this case, this is the aeration tanks or the, the biological nutrient removal tanks that are part of the MBR, MBR process. And then the actual membranes, it, instead of being located right here where they might be typically, because you had a building and had space within the building, the, imp, the membranes would have been located in that building instead of the filters that I mentioned under the other process. Um, CDM, as I mentioned, completed a report that included uh, actual <coughs> capital costs that it would take to build these two processes. Um, and then my next slide will be the operating cost. But on the <coughs> capital cost, as you see on here, uh, the capital uh, associated with the components that actually vary or change with this process. This isn't the entire plant, but these are components of the plant that have something to do with that biological process. And so as you look on here, you can see uh, the various uh, impacts on the headworks. In this particular case, the MBR requires more uh, or finer screens, so the cost of the screens, there had to be an extra screen placed in there and, the, and then the screens are, have a much finer opening in it to protect the membranes. Uh, when you get to the actual process that includes that, either that aeration tank or that oxidation ditch, uh, in the case of the uh, uh, membrane option, the membranes are included. In the other case of, of the five-stage oxidation ditch or the five-stage ditch with denitrification filters, it includes uh, just the oxidation ditch basically right here. But you can see that the actual cost of the MBR is higher than these two, but then it's all inclusive. It includes everything. Since you don't have final clarifiers, you don't have separate filters to go with it. So when you basically add in to the uh, oxidation ditch the cost of final clarifiers and then the cost of either regular uh, filters, similar to what you have today, or the denitrification filters, you can see that actually in this analysis the lowest cost option is from a capital standpoint was the MBR. Um, I also mentioned in, in uh, part of this future analysis that we're underway right now is that we asked uh, CDM to actually compare this on a five stage uh, operation here, but they have offered up some innovative ideas that may result in this being converted to a three-stage process. And if that uh, actually proves out to be the case, that that makes sense and it can do, uh, allow us to meet those limits today and also in the future, then that, if that three-stage process would actually bring the cost of this, uh, uh, the capital cost of the biological process, process down about $500,000 which would bring the cost of the, the capital cost of the five-stage denitrification filter a lot closer to the capital cost of the MBR. Um, I also mentioned that operating and maintenance costs are considered typically when we look at process decisions uh, because certainly the capital is something you spend today, um, but the operation is maintenance and maintenance is something you spend over the next, the life of the plant. We, we usually use an analysis period of 20 years, but as you've experienced with the existing plant, some of your processes have been running for more than 50 years. So it does set you into your 
your future costs associated with the treatment plan. So as you look at these numbers um, uh, and see the differences in, in the power, um, in, in the staff, you know, and, and, and we did make some assumptions on staff. Power is pretty easy to calculate. Um, certainly uh, uh, regular maintenance uh, and, and things like that were, and chemicals are pretty predictable. Um, but really the biggest uh, difference in the MBR versus the more conventional uh, uh, types of processes is the membranes themselves. <clears throat> the membranes cost about a million dollars in that capital cost, the actual membranes themselves. And those right now, we estimate typically that you'll get at least a 10-year life out of it. So what we've estimated is that basically you're going to spend somewhere around $76,000 a year that you need to put aside from your budget, um, from your rates, to uh, put into a, a, a membrane replacement fund that starting in year 10 or 11, you're going to start replacing membranes that either tear, wear out, or, or whatever. And, uh, by the, and we've made the assumption that by the end of year 15, you've replaced them all again, and then you're on a new 10-year lot. So as you look at that, that's a key differentiator, and you can see the difference in the uh, uh, o &M, annual O&M costs between uh, the MBR and the more traditional processes. And there's quite a bit of difference uh, on this option right here, which is the uh, five stage with denitrification filters primarily because we've been able in this process by the use of these denitrification filters eliminate one pump or one pumping process right now your pump your plant pumps three times this actually eliminates an entire uh, pumping uh, process in the middle of the process that saves about fifty thousand dollars a year and that's really what allowed the cost for the five stage with denitrification filters to come down to the lowest uh, annual capital or O&M cost. And then when you apply a, a present value over that 20 year period, you can see on here the difference that makes. Uh, it offsets the capital cost, the lower capital cost of the, uh, of the MBR uh, right here and replace, and, you know, more than offsets it and actually brings then the lowest cost option to be the five stage ox oxidation ditch with denitrification filters. And uh, as I said earlier, that it's likely this cost will even go down even more as they move through design. So um, the options that um, the commission has tonight is uh, to incorporate the improvements in the wastewater plant. Um, and uh, sorry, my glass is a little foggy. <laughs> and meet the new to meet the new permits by July 2018. The city commission has the following options: approve the recommended treatment process as written, um, which is to move forward with the uh, five-stage oxidation ditch with denitrification filters, or reject the recommended treatment process and give the city staff and HCR instructions on how to proceed. Um, our recommendation is city staff and HDR recommend that the city uh, commission authorize CDM Constructors Inc. to continue the, to the 90% design in the GMP development of the five stage oxidation ditch with, with final clarifiers and denitrifying filters process. Um, once 90% design in the GMP has been developed, the city commission will be presented or asked to accept. Uh, a GMP for the construction part and for authorization to enter into contract uh, with CDM Smith for the construction. Uh, action request requested is for the Commission to authorize CDM uh, Constructors Inc. to continue the 90% design uh, and GMP development of the five stage oxidation ditch with final clarifiers and denitrification filter process. I'm going to make a motion to authorize CDM Constructors Inc. to continue with the 90% design and GMP development of the five stage oxidation ditch with final clarifiers and denitrification filters process. Second. <clears throat> I have a motion by Commissioner Jones, seconded by Commissioner Schwaller for approval of the wastewater treatment facility design. And uh, we had great discussion on this uh, at our work session. Uh, uh, 
the city manager would like to weigh in on this and at least talk about, I, I think the public doesn't really know a lot about the process that you went through as far as the uh, design group and yeah, the number of meetings and so forth. This was a, a very involved process. You know, we had a we had the initial kickoff meeting in early January, and the first task was to identify the process. So CDM has been busy um, and HDR mm -hmm. with all the other aspects, the head works and, and everything else in the facility, but uh, special attention was given to this. And I think that first process meeting, um, we had at least four process engineers there. I mean, we had structural engineers, electrical engineers, uh, people representing the, 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 the construction side, you know, weighing in on that. It, it was a very involved process. There was a lot of opinions thrown around. Uh, there was a lot of heated discussion, but that's how we get to a good decision, and that's how we, I, I feel, we reached a, a good decision, a good recommendation for you guys. So we're very happy with the way this process is working. If this is approved tonight, what's the next thing that happens? Um, actually, the um, CDM Smith, the, their next deadline, we have, their, their second deadline after this report was to complete the basis of design report, which they did and submitted around the 1st of February. We, we had another meeting last week. We reviewed that. Uh, we gave them comments and they're resubmitting that. They actually are required to submit the 30% completion plans uh, by a week, uh, two weeks from Friday, and then we'll be meeting with them the first week of March. And then the end of March, they submit 60% plans. The end of April, they submit 90% plans. So the process is moving along at a very uh, good pace. That's why that's necessary. Huh? Well, we don't have a permit with KDHE, so unless we move quickly right. to construction, mm -hmm. we will not have a wastewater Absolutely. Plant. And yeah. and this design build process has been very good from that standpoint in keeping this on track in a in a in a very expedited manner and yet a quality manner that we're getting engagement on all the issues. So Commissioners? Comments? I don't have anything more than what we talked about last week. I mean, I, I appreciate the process that you guys have gone through to make sure that that we're getting the best process and the and the best for our dollar. Not necessarily that when it comes to this that we have to go with the most uh, the cheapest, but the best process that's economical. And I think we we're getting both the most economical and the best process for the city. So. I appreciate the work you guys have put into it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, go ahead. No, I, I really don't have anything to add other than to thank everybody for the, the time and the effort that they've put into it. Just hearing about the efforts that have been going on throughout January and into February from the city manager has been, I don't know, I guess, I don't want to say gratifying, but I don't really know how else to say. You know, it's just, it's good to know that there's so many eyes looking on something that you know isn't a significant investment for the community and something that hopefully will serve us for you know as long as the old plant has served us so thank you for your effort and time uh, to all of you and and, uh, and the city staff has been a tremendous part of this i mean what's making this process work is that the input they not only gave us back in the last year when we were putting together the original documents but also as we meet with contractors you know we get uh, very good participation from the city manager through the rest of the staff and so decision making happens uh, very decisively and we don't wait, nobody has to wait around for that type of thing so that doesn't surprise me at all yeah well, I think what's important too is we're, we're going to meet EPA current EPA standards and, uh, and according to your projections we should go down the road many many years and, and uh, meet any uh, new upgrades into those uh, requirements that they may have there's no further discussion. I will call for the vote on this, on the uh, wastewater treatment process design selection. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. That motion carries four to zero. Thank you. Uh, next item on our agenda is the uh, city manager employment agreement, ninth addendum. Uh, a little uh, background on that. At our last work session, uh, commissioners met in uh, executive session uh, with commissioners in attendance only, only in attendance, and uh, uh, reviewed the, um, our, uh, what do I want to call them? Evaluations. Evaluations of the city manager's performance this past year. We also had uh, some uh, 
uh, copies of uh, evaluations submitted by other staff members within the city uh, organization. Uh, I think overall it's safe to say that there was a um, general um, agreement that uh, city managers performed quite well under some extraordinary conditions. Uh, went part of the year without an assistant. Uh, we also, uh, he also, uh, through his leadership, undertook uh, two very major projects, uh, one which we just heard about, the wastewater treatment facility and all the meetings and planning that went in with that, as well as the historical uh, app uh, application uh, uh, for the uh, water transfer of the uh, water from the R9 ranch to the city of Hayes. That's now in the state's hands and uh, a number of other things just uh, to mention a few here but uh, you know plus the day-to-day -day running of the city uh, this agreement or i should say this uh, addendum um, puts the uh, commit uh, the city manager in line with a uh, approval of um, salary uh, raise for all city employees city manager comes under those same guidelines uh, to uh, receive a increase in section five of the salary uh, clause uh, in an amount of uh, two thousand fifty dollars commissioners any comments or discussion on this i just want to point out the the, the raise that uh, that is in there that two thousand fifty dollars that is not a calculation of a percentage that the rest of the employees received that that is a set rate just that is that's a set rate that every employee in the city um, received so the lowest paid received a two thousand and fifty dollar per year raise and then the highest paid employees also received a two thousand and fifty dollar raise so percentage wise this is one of the this is not one of this is the smallest um, raise that's being given this year and also I'd like to point out that that was um, that was that came from the city manager himself that was not something that was directed by the, the city commission so I just want to point both of those things out and, and commend Toby for um, putting the best interests of the, the city and city employees, I think, uh, at the forefront. The, uh, during our meeting, the commissioners did have some uh, recommendations, which I uh, met with the uh, city manager earlier and went over those. And so uh, within any organization, we're always, uh, we're doing a great job here as far as the uh, our city manager and staff are doing a great job, but as uh, with anything, there's always room for improvement. Covered those. Any further discussion? Great job. I enjoy, I thoroughly enjoy working with you and learning um, from you and, and enjoy our meetings that we have. So thank you and, and uh, glad that we're extending your contract. I'd entertain a motion. Uh, I would move that we approve the ninth addendum to City Manager Toby Doherty's employment agreement dated June 28, 2007, as presented. I'll second. Motion on the floor to uh, approve the uh, ninth addendum to the City Manager's employment agreement. Motion by Commissioner Myers, seconded by Commissioner Jones. All in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Motion carries 4-0. Next on the agenda is the report of the city manager. Um, I would like to thank the city commissioner for their continued report. It's a pleasure working for you all. Um, you guys are a good group, and, and I like working for you. Uh, just two things I had to, to bring up. Some of you may have noticed there is uh, some uh, construction going on at Lars Park in the concession area. And uh, the parks director and, and those involved are going to give a full report when it's finished. But um, just because it is pretty visible and, and, you know, with the warmer temperatures, people are going to be hanging out in that area a little more. Um, give you a little background on it. Larks Park's concession is very undersized. And if you've ever gone to a game, it can be quite congested. And, and there's a, a, they're, they're trying to do a lot of things out of a very small building. And so for many years, we've had a group of concerned um, um, residents that, that just truly take an interest in Lark's baseball and Hayes baseball in general um, as well as Fort Hayes uh, wanting to do something different with the facility there's been a lot of ideas of volunteer projects and group projects and none of them ever seem to get traction 
Uh, well, about a year ago, we had a group that, that, that seemed like they were able to get traction. They had some money um, to, to match city money, and, and, and they were, were wanting to do something down there. And we ran into the roadblock of the floodplain. And when you're constructing facilities in a floodplain, it's extremely difficult. And what they wanted to do was demolish the existing facility and rebuild. And now you have to adhere to um, uh, National Flood Protection Act standards and floodplain standards. And it was very difficult. So um, I challenged city staff to sit down with this group and, and let's try to figure out what their goals are, uh, what their expected outcomes are, and, and let's see if we can make this work within the constraints of the, of the floodplain regulations. And so we sat down with park staff and public work staff, planning inspection enforcement staff, and then the, the people who are interested in, in undertaking this project, and were able to come up with a plan of action that accomplished all of the needs of the, the Hayes Baseball Association at Fort Hayes and the city, and, and, and was done in a very economical manner. And so they put together a project. It was, it was approved by the city. Uh, a lot of volunteer effort, uh, a lot of people donating services and labor in kind. Heartland, I know, is donating uh, several pieces of equipment to this to this project. Um, anyway, they're they're nearing completion, and when it's done, as an attendee of either Hayes Basketball or Fort Hayes events, you will see the concessions area much improved, enlarged, better seating there, and and traffic should move through there a lot better. Uh, very happy with the project. It was a good effort, and it's. It's kind of indicative of what happens in Hayes. We have a lot of, of, of uh, community first-minded people, and this is a good example of that. Um, second of all, you might have noticed that um, last snowstorm we had uh, a little over a week ago, uh, we received some national recognition for how we handled the, the interstate closure and uh, the, the stacking of, of, of well over 200 semis and, and a lot of out-of-town visitors. And uh, I know a lot of you have commented on that, and I, I've had people comment to me on it, and people even, even you know, offer thanks to me. And, you know, I, I want to point out that I had nothing to do with it. Um, none of us actually had anything to do with it. This was the, this was the front lines that did this. Um, you know, starting early on in the storm, Greg Sun and the Public Works people, they got ahead of the storm. They, the, the, the streets were in amazing condition, given the, the winds and some of the things that we had to go on. Um, the police department, and the, the Hayes Police Department, Don Scheibler, and then Ed Harbin and the Ellis County Sheriff, as well as the Kansas Highway Patrol, they did a great job of getting the truckers and, and the, the people off the interstate, finding places for them to park. Uh, Anna Finley with Asset Access Transportation sent the access, one of the access vans out to shuttle drivers to and from Walmart to make sure they get the supplies they need. Uh, this was uh, Bill Ring, the Emergency Management Director, was involved in this, making sure people had what they need. I mean, this was a group effort um, that I'm happy to say I had nothing to do with it. They, they made this happen. They had this plan in place. They, they all made this happen, and it was, it was a good reflection on Hayes. And so for, uh, uh, again, several hundred drivers who were stuck in Hayes overnight, their experience was enjoyable. Even the local restaurants um, sent their delivery drivers up there to take orders, knowing that a, a lot of them may not know what was available for delivery. So it was, it was a good deal for us and a good deal for them, and I hope it made their stay a little more enjoyable. That was all I had. Thank you, Doug. Mr. Jones, Mr. Schwaller, um, nothing this evening. Um, I don't know if, speaking of Larks Park, there was a letter to the editor in the Hayes Daily News a while back about railings and maybe some accessibility issues. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Did you read that? Has there any kind of, just you talking about that made me remember that and that I was going to ask if what, what that was about and if there's anything we could do about it what was contained in that letter. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. I did read that letter. I, I kind of made a mental note to talk to the parks director and see if there's an issue that needs to be looked into, and I didn't. So I will make a note now, and I'll talk to Jeff about it. Okay. Thank you. My, and I just, in regards to what you said about with the, we really did look great, and we looked not, not from anything that we did up here, but just the community looked great. My dad called me that night because my dad was a truck driver for decades, and he's retired now, but... <coughs> For some reason, he still calls all of his old trucker buddies like once a night. I don't, it's, it's what he does. I don't understand it, but it's what he does. But anyway, apparently two of them were stuck in Hayes, and uh, neither one of them knew that my dad, that we lived in Hayes, but they were just up in arms about how awesome their stay is. That if we have to be stuck in the middle of nowhere, not making any money, uh, we pick Hayes. <laughs> so. <laughs> 
they did a really great job. So I got to hear about all, of, that's actually the first, my, then of course my dad has to call me up and tell me about it. So that was actually the first time I'd heard about that um, until then it was finally in the news the next day. Yeah, so man. yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was just made me so proud to, to receive that phone call. So good work to everybody that participated in that. Absolutely. Uh, as mayor, I received a number of emails on this from uh, uh, people as far away as Florida <coughs> and New York. And, um, and like the uh, city manager here, I was quick to respond to them and tell them that I had nothing to do with it, but pointed out uh, the coordinated effort we had, you know, with our police departments, emergency service people and so forth. And, uh, and uh, I just thought it was a tremendous thing. And uh, uh, one of the, a couple of the, uh, the people that emailed compliment or, um, conveyed to me that they'd been through things like this before and what they were amazed, they were truckers and they were amazed uh, uh, at uh, how that was handled because uh, when you come off I-70 in a snowstorm like that with uh, semi trucks, it can be pretty tedious. And uh, that was pretty amazing how they stacked them up out there. Uh, I do have uh, a question. Um, uh, several of us are going to a water conference. Uh, how, does, uh, how does that affect? Are we going to have the, the next meeting early or, or that week? Do we have the meeting earlier? Uh, we actually aren't going to have the second meeting this month. Uh, the work, There's two items in the work session next week, and neither one of them are action items. Oh, okay. uh, Kim is giving the review of the uh, financial management policy, and then North Central Kansas Technical College will be in to give their annual report. And okay. then we have no action items for the second meeting this month. Okay. okay. Nothing further to come before the commission. This meeting is adjourned. So is that is that meeting?